I'm Apollo. And I'm Boots. And we're Team ISO. Today we have a small, short, educational video for NESAG members who are new to Airsoft about safety equipment needed to play on NESAG fields. First up, ESS goggles. They're full seal, eye protection goggles. You definitely need these if you want to play on NESAG fields or if you play Airsoft in general. Full steel goggles are a must. You don't want to lose an eye. Or a paintball mask. Okay? Protect your face. If you're an airsofter who's 16 years of age or younger, a paintball mask is a required item. If you're between the ages of 16 and 18, you can use just full seal goggles, but you also have to have something covering your mouth, such as a she mug or a balaclava. And also, please note that wire mesh goggles of any kind are forbidden on all NESAG fields because even if the steel mesh is enough to stop a BB, it's not enough to stop a BB if it hits it in fragments. You'll get fragmentation in your eye and you'll be blind. Next up, radios, FRS radios. Very important for playing airsoft to keep in contact with your squad members, with field staff, and the whole team in general to find out what's going on. Also, in case there's an emergency, this is your best way of contacting field staff to get game to a hold and getting medical attention for yourself or anyone else. At most fields, channel 1 on an FRS radio will put you in contact with the field staff. So if you get lost or there's some sort of emergency, that's your best way to contact them. If you don't have a radio, <coughs> which you should because it is mandatory, a cell phone is also not a required item, but a desired item to have on you at all times. In case, for any reason, you cannot contact anybody on the radio, you still have some sort of means of contacting the outside world. Watch. Watch is very important. If you don't have a cell phone or you don't want yours on you, watch can tell you what time it is, let you know what's going on in case there's an end time for any type of scenario for a gameplay. It's a mandatory item. You can't go on the field without a watch or at least a cell phone so that you somehow know what time it is. Hydration. You always need water on you. Water, Gatorade, soda is probably one of the worst things that you can drink when playing airsoft, especially in the heat. Water, hydrate all the time, either in a small canteen, in a water bottle like this, or, or a backpack-mounted hydration carrier, such as the one on the back of this cross draw vest that has a drinking spout. You can carry it on your back. It's out of the way. You can just sip water whenever you get thirsty. Very important to note, too, if you don't have any type of hydration carrier and you do bring water bottles on the field, take your trash off. Nobody wants people littering. Okay? Kill rag. Red rag. Either a kill rag or a chem light for night games. This lets other players know that you are dead. You are no longer in play. Always have this out when you're hit, and always say that you're a dead man walking, because you don't want to get shot when you're not playing. This is an example of a red chem light. It hasn't been activated. You just crack it in half, and shake it, and it'll glow for about six hours. You have to have these if you play a night game. Next up, proper footwear. Boots. Hiking boots combat boots, something with ankle support if you're going to be on rough terrain, and extra socks. Very important for any player. Your feet, you don't want them screwed up, okay? You don't want to roll an ankle in the field because then you're just damaging yourself. Make sure they fit properly, otherwise you'll get blisters and those are not fun to deal with. Another thing to keep in mind, <clears throat> if you can help it, don't wear cotton socks. Wear wool socks or synthetic socks. Cotton kills if it gets wet. Last but not least, barrel condoms, okay? Socks do not count as barrel condom. You need a field regulated barrel condom. You can get them on Evite for what it was. 99 the, cents. 99 cents, okay? Very important. You need this on your weapon at all times when you're not playing. When you're in a no-play zone, you need this on your weapon. Magazine out, just like this, on safe. As for handguns... Pistols, sidearms, whatever, they don't have to have barrel condoms on them, but they have to be on safety with the magazine out and carried in some sort of holster. This is the final segment of our video where we're going to cover additional items that you're going to want to have with you. They're not mandatory items, you don't have to have them. 
in order to play at a Nissan field, but they're just basically good ideas that we've figured out from our experience playing on Nissan fields. Uh, for example, a big thing that is not required, but you're going to probably want to have it, is protective gloves to protect your hands, such as mechanics gloves that you can get at the uh, auto parts store, or like the hard knuckle protective gloves that you can find on the internet. A good example is, I wear these, they're comfortable, they're breathable, your hands don't get sweaty, you get good grip, good dexterity, and they're cheap. Um, <clears throat> another thing that you're going to want to have, especially for night games, is a flashlight, a decent flashlight. Something that's bright enough to find your way around in the dark, not like a keychain <laughs> flashlight, nothing silly like that. A tactical flashlight such as this one's mounted to your weapon is probably the best way to go. That way you don't clutter up your hands. You're not trying to point a flashlight and your weapon at the same time. So this is a good example. Clicks on and off. If you don't want to do that, just any flashlight will do. This military style L flashlight is perfect. Even something as small as this Gerber tactical flashlight. It's nothing fancy. Um, always remember if you're going to bring any sort of electronic devices with you, flashlights, uh, sights, anything that uses batteries, bring at least one set of spare batteries. Especially for radios. Especially for your radios and your flashlight. Uh, another thing that we find that we need a lot, that everyone needs a lot all the time, is duct tape. Such as this Gorilla Tape. <clears throat> it's really durable, really sticky, and... I can't tell you how many times I've gotten out of a problem situation just from having duct tape available on e hand. Either duct tape or electrical tape. Right. And it, once you become more advanced and working on uh, you know, your airsoft guns or even uh, your friends with you, uh, a small tool case of Allen wrenches or screwdrivers w would be a good thing to have on you. Right. The primary thing you're going to want in order to make emergency airsoft gun repairs if it breaks down is a Phillips screwdriver and a... Uh, universal hex key set. Uh, another good idea you're going to want to probably invest in is some knee pads. Elbow pads, not so much. You don't really end up on your elbows too much, but you end up on your knees a lot. So I got these at a convenience store, uh, what a, a hardware store or something, yeah. for like $7. They're really easy to come by. You don't have to have the black hog gear. You know, condor, knee or pads. condor knee pads. These ones I got for seven dollars. They work fine. They're durable. These have lasted me years. Also, <coughs> having pens and a paper to take notes on mission objectives, things like that. It's always a good idea to have a small notebook, some pens, and a sharpie is also a good idea. This is a silver sharpie, but. Uh, to have a black sharpie with you is usually a good idea as well. Yeah, uh, on a side note, uh, <coughs> marking your stuff is a good idea too. Your mags, if you have black mags, silver sharpie, just right. mark your gear so that with your, if you have to toss a mag to somebody else who's maybe not on your team, but just like on your personal team, but on the main team for whatever game you're playing, they know how to tell your mag from their mags right. when as, the game is over. As well as if you lose a uh, part of your gear on the ground and someone finds it later they know who to return it to um, also a good idea to have a backup battery for your AEG so your AEG will probably come from wherever you buy it from with a battery <coughs> you should probably buy a secondary battery so when your battery dies you have one to switch to and you don't have to wait for your battery to charge um, <coughs> another thing that's a very good idea especially if you or someone on your airsoft team has any sort of medical experience at all is a personal first aid kit. Um, this is a Condor Tearaway EMT pouch. You don't have to go all crazy. I have medical training so I know how to use all the stuff in this kit. You don't have to go all out but just to have something like gauze or band-aids, something to treat simple field injuries. A good idea of something to have in your <coughs> medical pouch would be mole skin to cover blisters on feet. That's something you run into a lot, but um, it doesn't even need to be medical supplies. Something as simple as a Nutrigrain bar for somebody who's feeling fatigued out in the field is a good idea to have. Right. I mean, it's not like you're responsible for medically treating everyone at, the, at a game, but it's a very good idea to have 
some of these supplies in here. Like, I, I keep uh, Visine eye drops in case someone gets debris in their eyes to help wash that out. I have a bug bite pen in here in case you get bit by bugs and it's, you know, itchy. I even keep a, you can get this at any drugstore or whatever, it's just a glucose gel tube for someone who's having a, like, someone who's diabetic or someone who has, you know, hypoglycemia. Hypo, hypoglycemia. Um, it's just basically some basic things, band-aids, but bug you know, spray and <coughs> Sometimes suntan lotion too, yes. depending on uh, what type of clothing you're wearing. If you're wearing right. long sleeves, then obviously you're not going to need uh, suntan lotion on your arms. But if you're wearing a short sleeve T-shirt, then that w would be advised, especially in the summer months. Right. Always come prepared for weather conditions. Always expect the worst. You want to have something to protect you from rain, uh, a poncho or a rain jacket, something that you can stow away and easily get to in the event of uh, poor weather. Uh, also, like Apollo mentioned, to have sunscreen and bug spray. Sunscreen is important. You don't want to get a sunburn. Sometimes playing airsoft, you're out there for a long time under you know extreme sun conditions. As well as, <clears throat> you can also wear you know appropriate clothing such as a sun, you know, a sun weather hat, like a boonie hat, or a or baseball hat backwards, or however, just to protect your your the back of your neck, your face, just from the sun, so that way there it's not beating down on you. Also, one other thing to note is if you want your airsoft guns to last a long time, you have to use quality ammunition such as Matrix High Polish BBs or TSD BBs. Never use anything below 0.2 gram BBs. Make sure that the high polish, 0.2 gram is the standard, 0.25 is also highly recommended. Uh, right. Once you get into the higher FPS range guns and uh, do more designated bulls such as a sniper or designated marksman, you go up into the heavier type BBs like 2.8, 3 gram, 4, uh, 0.4 gram BBs as right. well. Basically any BBs that you buy at Walmart, Dick's Sporting Goods, Sports Authority, Models, Models, any or any BBs that come from the factory with your gun are probably not suitable for airsoft play. So always use high quality BBs in your guns. Never use paint BBs either oh, because they'll use. damage your hollow unit. Right. So that concludes our <coughs> inf informational video for newcomers to airsoft. I hope we've answered most of your questions. If you have any questions for us, if there's something that we didn't cover in the video, leave comments in the section below. Why are we you recording? We're not doing anything right now. <laughs> Your beard is tickling me.